to mitigate the impacts of climate change. One way that scientists are studying the relationship between climate and chemistry is through computer modeling. These models simulate the interactions between the atmosphere, oceans, and land surface. and can be used to predict how changes in greenhouse gas emissions or other factors will affect the Earth's climate. However, these models are complex and require large amounts of data, so there is still much work to be done to improve their accuracy and reliability. Another approach to studying the relationship between climate and chemistry is through experimental research. For example, Scientists can use controlled laboratory experiments to study how changes in atmospheric chemistry affect the Earth's climate. Or they can conduct field studies to measure the concentrations of different gases and aerosols in the atmosphere. These experiments can provide valuable insights into the complex interactions between climate and chemistry and help to improve our understanding of the Earth's climate system. There are also many practical applications of the relationship between climate and chemistry. For example, understanding how changes in the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans affect the Earth's. Climate can help policymakers develop more effective strategies to mitigate the impacts of climate change. This could include measures such as reducing greenhouse gas emissions, improving energy efficiency, or developing new technologies that capture and store carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In addition, the relationship between climate and chemistry is important for many industries, such as agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. Changes in the chemistry of the oceans can affect the growth and survival of marine organisms, while changes in the chemistry of the atmosphere can affect the productivity of crops and forests. Therefore, understanding the complex relationship between climate and chemistry is crucial for maintaining the sustainability of these industries and ensuring their long-term viability. Chemical reactions in the atmosphere and oceans play a crucial role in regulating the Earth's climate. These reactions involve a variety of chemical species, including gases such as nitrogen oxides, NOx, volatile organic compounds, box, and sulfur dioxide, SO2, as well as aerosols and particles suspended in the air and dissolved in water. In the atmosphere, chemical reactions involving NOx and box can produce ozone, which is a greenhouse gas and a major component of smog. Ozone is formed when NOx and box react in the presence of sunlight and other atmospheric conditions. The reactions can take place in the lower atmosphere, where they contribute to the formation of smog, or in the upper atmosphere, where they can affect the concentration of greenhouse gases. Another important reaction in the atmosphere involves sulfur dioxide, SO2, which is emitted from volcanoes, industrial activities, and other sources. SO2 can react with other gases and particles in the atmosphere to form sulfate aerosols, which can reflect sunlight back into space and cause a cooling effect on the Earth's climate. Sulfate aerosols also contribute to the formation of acid rain, which can have significant impacts on ecosystems and human health. In the oceans, chemical reactions play an important role in regulating the Earth's carbon cycle. The oceans absorb about 30% of the carbon dioxide that is released into the atmosphere by human activities, which helps to mitigate the effects of global warming. When carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, it reacts with water molecules to form carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of the water and makes it more acidic. This process is known as ocean acidification, and it can have significant impacts on marine ecosystems, particularly on organisms that rely on calcium carbonate to build their shells and skeletons. 
Chemical reactions in the oceans also play a critical role in the nitrogen cycle, which is important for the growth and survival of marine organisms. Nitrogen is a key nutrient for marine life, and it can be limiting in some parts of the ocean.